So with coffee in hand, on this video, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bell crank rebuild. Um, I showed in a previous video how bad it is. It shakes quite a bit. Let me show you. Not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this. Gonna try and get in here, and give us a little bit of movement. Hopefully you can see how much movement that has. I'm just gonna use the play in the steering wheel. You keep an eye on that bell crank and we'll see what it does. So before we go ahead and break into doing this bell crank, um, I actually have the service manual here. I actually have it in a Google document on the PDF. Um, and it doesn't give a whole lot of instruction for removal. I mean, basically it gives you this paragraph for teardown, which <laughs> really is pretty basic. Uh, it does give you a nice exploded view. So that's probably going to end up being helpful. And then reassembly for the uh, torque amount. So we're going to go ahead and begin on this. And when I was doing the work on this Jeep before the chassis, doing the cleaning and restoration work, brake work, uh, most of it was really just to do the mechanical side of things that needed to get done so I could get uh, some testing done on the vehicle. Because when I bought this, uh, it had no working brakes on it. It was somewhat drivable. I could move it from the trailer into the shop, but that was about it. <clears throat> so this area with the suspension, I didn't do any cleaning because I knew I was going to have to come back in and do work on this. Now, when I have it off, I may end up powder coating this piece. It uh, really wouldn't take me very long to do. And uh, being that it's rather exposed at the front would probably be a good solution for long-term uh, care for it or to keep it looking new. joint separator here. We're going to try and push that rubber down just a little bit. I should have some other dust covers around that I can replace that with. There we go. Alright. Now hopefully we can squeeze them together. Go and tap that through. All right. this out we'll get this a little bit better cleaned up okay let's try to see if we can go the other way there we go okay next I'm going to loosen up this bolt right here now the manual doesn't tell you how to disassemble, it tells you how to reassemble. And one of the things it says was to keep that loose when you're tightening, torquing this other bolt down. So I'm going to assume that it's going to be the reverse to remove it. Now we're going to push this bolt out. Next we're going to work on this, getting to that nut up there. Considering I don't know what size it is, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Okay, that does indeed turn. 
Now I'm going to assume that the nut on top is also turning with it. But the fact that I have it spinning is a good sign. I'm going to try the one inch on that. My guess is it may end up being smaller. And that's going to be a little bit more complicated to get a wrench up and in here. Might be one inch. I think I'm starting to feel some pressure on this. And that wrench is staying in place. nut off of there yet yep I think we do there we are so we should be able to pull this down I might have to turn it to get it to come the rest of the way down the washer should be everything that's up there other than a lot of dirt But I have to continue to, uh, there we are, pulling down on it a little bit at the same time. Okay. So now with this bell crank free, let's take a look, see what we've got here. Looks like that slides right out, apparently. This looks a bit different, and well, we'll see how different it is. Looking inside, I can see the needle bearings inside of that. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but there are needle bearings inside of that. So let's take a look at our replacement parts and see what we've got. Let's get our locking bolt. That slides pretty easily on that shaft. Go check length. So the same length. This one now has a cotter pin at the top of it, so that's a little bit different. So that's falling in the same place. These needle bearings come out. I'm going to assume that they're pushed in and out. There's just the slightest amount of movement in there, which doesn't seem like much, but it seems like the tolerances should be a bit better than that. Because when you're talking about translating that to this length, that's going to exaggerate that, so we're going to still have movement. That does concern me a little bit, the way this uh, replacement piece is. But I still need to, it's what I have, so this is what we're going to end up using. It's got to be better than what currently is. Oh, after a few minutes in the parts washer, got things cleaned up. Uh, with the cleaning process, I knocked all the uh, needle bearings out. That was just a matter of wiping them out. Um, what I believe I'm going to end up doing, these are uh, rubber, I guess they're dust shields. Okay, so I got the uh, seals out. And just so you can see, it is a small casing with rubber on it. And the way I wound up doing it is I simply just used a punch went down through, knocked them out from one side and then the other side. To get the bearing races out, what I'm doing, I have this in my press. Now, it's it's possible that if you didn't have a press, you might be able to come in here with a small uh, metal cutting blade going through it and then just barely slice through the bearings and then knock, knock them out with the uh, a punch. What I wound up doing, I didn't have a socket that was just the right size here. 
So I did find a washer though. And so I put the washer in, put the socket on, and then I have a much larger socket down here to catch. So by putting a little bit of pressure on it, there we go. Should be able to push these right back out. So I just pulled it out to see why I felt pressure again. Here you can see that it has moved. The washer is sitting on top of it. And down at the bottom, this hasn't moved yet. But what it is, the other race has run into the bottom one. So now I'm going to finally give it a push through. All right. Sounds like one just dropped out. There we go. It looks pretty clean in there, so no damage. Pretty happy with that. There's our bearing races and my washer. So I've decided before I press in the new bushings, I'm gonna go ahead and do the powder coating on this. So I have it ready to go. I got uh, heat resistant tape on here so we don't get any powder down into the race area. I've got a silicone plug in where the grease fitting goes. I also have a silicone plug up where the uh, tire rod goes. Though I doubt that's gonna be that critical, but I went ahead and sealed that off. So we'll go ahead and start doing the powder. Good. a bit more professional. I should open the oven door before I did that. And it goes. I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. Now we're doing this piece at 400 degrees which should be sufficient. So here's the finished piece. This is a satin black from Eastwood. This piece is still a little bit warm. So my thinking is what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the that pin to hold this together so I don't lose any bearings. And then I'm going to do this to push it in. Now these bearings have to be recessed at an eighth of an inch based on um, the manual. So my thinking is I'm tempted to try and do both of them at the same time. That might cause issues. So I think we're going to do one at a time. So. That's going to be the easiest way, and I'm just going to put a plate up here. Okay, here we go. Looks like it's pressing in pretty easily. I'm just going to take it down. Again, that's flush right now, and I know I have to recess that by an eighth of an inch. Now we're going to do the other one, hopefully the exact same way. I'm gonna drop this pin down in there. I hope none of those needle bearings came out. Nope, we're good. Going in real nice. Having a press makes this a lot better. Okay, now I'm gonna lift. Next thing we need to do is recess this so I have that washer, which is a perfect fit, but we're going to have to remove that pin because this washer won't go past that. We'll set that off to the side. Washer is probably the distance, the thickness. Once that goes flush, we should be recessed about where we need to be. Okay, here we go. I 
So we could probably go just a little bit further to get this to land flush. We're going to take that washer just a little bit deeper. Again, manual calls for one eighth of an inch, and I'm sure that washer is less than an eighth of an inch. There we go. Now we're going to do the same with the opposite side, and then we'll finally finish up with pushing in the seals. Okay, now with those recessed, now we should be able to push our seals in. Okay, with just a little bit of lube, I was able to push that right in. Okay. So we've got everything put back together here. So we're gonna start uh, pushing things together. First off, this piece, which should be up here. Instead, it was hanging down in there. So I got that all cleaned up. So now before I put this in, I gotta find my washer. Okay. Now I can push my washer into this. Smeared some grease on that. Okay, I'm going to use that tire rod to help hold that in place until I can get the nut and washer up there. And okay, get our washer up in here. Get our nut in place. Okay, got that pretty close. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our connection here. If we can get this cover to actually go on there and stay. There we go. You're supposed to do this to about 20 pounds and then back it off to fit the cotter key in. Which we did. So that'll be in place. At this point. In fact, I gotta get the torque wrench on this. It's at 70 pounds on that. Also, before I go and torque, I'm at least going to sit my bolt in. But according to the manual, we're not going to make that tight just yet. Okay. All right. Stole a dust boot from uh, some leftover parts I have for the 55 Chevy. Seems like it'll fit well enough. So we looked it up, it's 50 pounds for this locking bolt. Get a wrench on here to hold this other side. There we go. To the tire rod, which will be 40 pounds. Tight, tight, and done. So we're all good. Last thing to do is push some grease into that fitting yet. And um, I'm also gonna grease this fitting as well. Tire rod, and then uh, we'll test it out. Well, that seems pretty solid. The real test is gonna be to move the wheel.
So that's going to do for this video. I hope you enjoyed what you saw um, following the journey of this little Jeep. If you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Of course, it's free to you, no obligation. And if you want, hit that bell down the bottom corner there. That'll notify you as soon as a new video is uploaded. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time.